And thank you so much for being here and sharing with us about your Civil Air Patrol Educator resources. You're welcome. How are you guys doing? Good? Everybody can hear me? Okay. So my name is Linda McPherson. I'm with Alaska Civil Air Patrol, and I am the Director of Aerospace Education in STEM. Does anybody know what Civil Air Patrol is before I go? Further, blank looks, crickets. <laughs> okay, let me share my screen and I will tell you a little bit about us. Okay, can everybody see Civil Air Patrol up there? Yep, good deal. All right. So. We have three missions. We are a nonprofit 501c3, and Congress basically assigned us the three missions of emergency services, our cadet program, and then aerospace education, both internally and externally. Okay. So the external part is where I basically go out. I'm working with the schools, the homeschool parents, um, youth groups. Anyone, libraries, anyone who's interested in STEM will show you a way to get those resources, okay? Just real quickly, these are the regions. CAP is broken up. It's only um, in the US. We do have a couple that are on um, some foreign Air Force bases. I think Germany and Japan are primarily those. But we are in the Pacific region. Not sure why they gave us Nevada. It's not by the ocean. Maybe California will fall off later. Who knows? Um, Maxwell Air Force Base down here, that's where our headquarters is. So if you um, run into a problem with your STEM kits, if you order them and there's a problem, you haven't received it or anything, give me a call and I will get hold of them down there. Um, be a little patient though when it's hurricane season because they do get very busy doing the searches, the emergency services. Um, but they are really good about getting uh, the answers within 24 hours. Okay. And then uh, a little bit later on, I'll talk to you about the cadet program that we have. But these are the squadrons that we have currently throughout the state. So we do have three of them. Ketchikan, Delta Greeley, and Lake Hood here in Anchorage that are cadet-only squadrons, meaning there's a limited amount of adult staff, but it's predominantly made for the cadets. All of the others are considered a composite squadron, meaning they have equal parts of cadets and adult volunteers. Okay, so now for the fun stuff, right? Yeah, okay. So right now we have over 50 different STEM products that we have available to um, educators, both informal and formal. Um, we have, it's open to principals, vice principals, um, substitute, teacher aides, homeschool parents, uh, librarians, museums, youth organizations, all of those make you eligible to receive the STEM kits, the curriculum, and everything else that we offer. So there is usually some way that I can get you into the program. You'll meet one of the criteria, one way or the other. Um, currently, we've got 20 STEM kits. And um, like I was telling Megan last night, I got word of three new STEM kits that they just put out. So I hurried up and added those to the slide to be able to show you what those are. That's kind of exciting. Um, we have over 40 different curriculum. The curriculum are ranging from three years of age going clear into entry to college. So no matter what grade you're teaching, we have a curriculum out there. Those are all free as well. The nice thing about the curriculum is all of them are on PDF. About half of them you can still get in a book format. If you're one of those that you want to hold the curriculum, um, about half of them are still available in that format, but all of them are in PDF. 
So you can go in, you can pick and choose. You don't have to limit yourself. If you have a student in second grade, that doesn't mean you can't get the high school curriculum. You can go through and look at all of them, okay? Uh, women in aviation, we've got both first and second volumes. The second one just came out. That is actually a really um, exciting curriculum to use with the students because uh, it goes through, I think there's 12 different female aviators um, going through history that made remarkable accomplishments. So you have their biography, you have uh, some test questions, and then you have um, an activity where you have the templates of their airplane that they made famous or their rocket, their hot air balloon, where you can make um, the plane or the uh, aircraft. So it's bringing a little bit of the lesson to a hands-on component where they retain it a lot better. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, I know, I want to say it was Talkeetna Library or Trapper Creek, one of them, they had the students come in and they were making all of the different aircraft and everything. They got the little, um, what are they called, dowel rods and styrofoam, and they put them up all over the library. And the librarian called me and she was like, the kids were so taken by it. They were bringing their parents in, telling them about the aircraft, telling them, you know, who made it famous, things like that. So they really sealed in that lesson. <coughs> Excuse me. So um, that's what we have with the women in aviation curriculums. Uh, the AEMs or aerospace education members, that is basically what you are. If you enrolled in the program, you would be considered an aerospace educator member. Currently in the U.S., we've got over 7,000, and they're impacting three quarters of a million uh, students. So we are getting as many uh, STEM kids curriculum programs out to uh, the educators so that they can use that to teach STEM for the students. The Air Force Association is the one who predominantly funds most of this. Um, we do get a lot of grants and everything but the Air Force Association is the one who really pushes the program. And they want, basically, they're doing an investment in the students at a younger age, teaching them STEM early on. By the time they graduate, they are already ready to go into those STEM careers. They have a lot more ability um, and understanding versus someone who really doesn't work with STEM. When they graduate, they have to be taught, you know, from the very beginning. So they're making the investment early on for the students. Aerospace Connections and Education is a program that we also offer. And we'll talk about that one a little bit later. But in uh, last school year, they actually broke a record of 70,000 uh, students that took part in it in all 50 states. So that was an awesome thing uh, going on. <laughs> I promise you, I don't have COVID. <laughs> um, let's see. And oh, 2018, we had the teacher of the year down in uh, Kenai. Let's see. Here we have. Uh, excuse me, any questions? No? Okay, moving on. I think. There we go. Okay, this shows you um, a little bit of the curriculum that we have. This isn't all of them. It just kind of gives you a little better idea of what's out there. Um, Tuskegee Airmen, that volume should be coming out uh, sometime in late December. 
but these range anywhere, like I said, uh, aerospace for the very young starts at three years of age. Um, what is it? Advanced math is going into college level. So you have a big span that you can choose from. All of them have some sort of uh, activities that go along with them so that it's uh, enhancing that lesson that they'll be able to retain it a little bit better than just rote memory. And then here I've uh, done a couple of screenshots, excuse me, of different activities that are in some of the books. Um, the building the robotic arm. It's going to tell you what national standards it needs. It's going to tell you the instructions, how to uh, do the project. And then uh, on the next page, which I didn't uh, do the screenshot of, it's going to um, basically help you explain to the students the purpose of the robotic arm, where it came from, what it's um, supposed to do, things like that, so that you have everything you need. We don't want you to have to struggle. It's like, oh, great, the robotic arm looks fun. Now I've got to figure out all the information to teach it. We're going to go ahead and give that to you. Uh, another example, this one is out of the ACE program for kindergarten, the straw rockets. They seem, you know, silly and fun, but they do meet national standards, you know, for science, for math. The background information is down there. There'll be some test questions. They're going to have the students do some graphing on how well it flew. What did they need to change? Did they need to add different pins? Things like that. Um, another one, this one is fun because you can use this one in so many ways on how a rocket works. We, um, this one is doing it horizontally, but you can also do it vertically. Tie the string to the ceiling and to the floor having it go up and down, or you could tie it to two chairs, making it go across. During Thanksgiving, we put uh, turkey feathers on it. At Christmas time, we put Santa on it. Um, we have Cupid around Valentine's Day. It's just ways that you can incorporate the holiday into a lesson, okay? And for the older kids, it will show you how to build the NASA wind tunnel. It's got the different uh, data that you'll need to collect, and it's going to show you also how to make the cubes, the orbs, everything to put inside that wind tunnel to collect the data. That is all there for you. Any questions before I go on to the STEM kits? No? Is everybody still awake? I'm really enjoying this, and I um, that one that you just showed the uh, how how does a rocket work on the string? I remember, mm -hmm. um, gosh, was it almost two years ago now? It was right right at the COVID shutdown when you guys mm -hmm. um, put together a bunch of kits of the supplies needed oh, for the that bags, activity. Yes. And you had a pickup yes. and my son did that. He was in kindergarten at the time. And I remember mm -hmm. that being a really neat connection and a really fun um, sense of community, knowing that all of these kids mm -hmm. were doing the same activity together from their homes. And um, it was really yeah. engaging. We had a lot of fun with it. And it's, you know, it's fun, but at the same time, you know, you do different size balloons. They learn all about thrust the way the air flows, you know, and then start collect, or collecting the data on it, they really can go and just expand on it. Oh and yeah, we, we dove into it. Bunch. It was both my son and my preschool daughter doing it. So we uh -huh. were doing comparisons and races and changing one thing and which, which went faster after that. So it was great. Yeah, it was really easy to build on, but super engaging. I know a straw, a balloon, and some string, and you can entertain them for hours. It is amazing. 
um, <clears throat> excuse me, we've got this current STEM kits, not including the new ones, are right here. They broke them down this time by um, aviation, STEM, and cyber, just to kind of put it out there. If you're focusing on one area, these would be the STEM kits that you would use for that particular area. Um, I know Raspberry Pi and I think it's astronomy. Those two are on back order from the vendor right now. Unfortunately, with COVID, it's probably on a ship from somewhere. But I know those two are on back order. Let's see. The weather station, that is definitely an awesome one to get because you can hook that up <clears throat> and become a weather spotter. It has the display down there. You can also attach it to your phone so you can always see the weather. Uh, if you have uh, like a group or a co-op, you can have, you know, one of the students is the weatherman for the day. It's going to tell you the temperature inside, outside, the barometric pressure, uh, any precipitation. Then it also, at the bottom, I don't know if you can see it too well on the screen, but it has a ticker that's going across, um, giving you additional information. And it will hold up to 30 days worth of information, um, but then you would have to download that information. But it's great for teaching students, even from the very young, um, build your weather journal. You know, what was the weather today? What was the temperature? And just have them start graphing that information and collecting it. They have a lot of fun with that. The flight simulator, I had to fight, <laughs> nicely fight with National because they would only give the flight simulators to students, seven, or excuse me, ninth grade and higher. My complaint with that is Alaska is very aviation heavy. Uh, we have kids, you know, in kindergarten, first grade, second grade, they already have an idea of what aviation is and its importance. So um, national after, you know, I sent them all my information, you know, argued my protest, they went ahead and they dropped it down only for Alaska. You can get it as low as grade four. So fourth grade and up, only for Alaskans, you can get that one. Um, another good one, the cross-country navigation goes along well with that one too. But uh, any of you that teach geometry, the build and learn geometry, very hands-on. It is a great resource tool. Same thing with ang legs, teaching them about the angles and so forth. They've got all different kinds of cards in there with uh, tasks for them to complete. Uh, Linda, see. we have a question in the chat wanting to know, um, do these kits, are they grade specific? Do they have a particular grade range or do they have adjustments that where you could do like the weather station <laughs> for elementary and for high school? How does, how does that work? Good question. So they have on the website where it gives you kind of a grade range for what it is built for that doesn't lock you into it. That just is saying the manufacturer says this STEM kit is made for, you know, sixth to eighth grade, what have you. That doesn't mean if you have a fourth or fifth grader, you can't get that STEM kit. They're just giving you an idea. Um, we have some parents that are like, oh, it's great. You know, I want all of them. It's like, what did the kids want? <laughs> and then start there. You know, are you going to focus more on space or on cyber? That's why they've got them broken out. Kind of think about it before you go and order something. Um, when people find out the remote control aircraft, that is a $700 plus STEM kit, okay? That's not a little RC airplane. That has a wingspan of about four feet. It's little over three and a half feet, nose to tail. 
It also comes with a RC flight simulator, okay? So before you go out and crash that airplane, <laughs> fly it on the simulator first so that you understand how to work it and everything. Um, the last one that they put out was a, I think it was a Cub. So it had uh, wheels and it also had a return to safe flight mode. So if it went crazy, it adjusted itself and landed. They used to have one where you had to hold it and make it go from your hand. That one apparently had issues. <laughs> People were getting hurt. So they upgraded it. And now this one's on wheels. It'll take off and land by itself. OK, any other questions? No? I remember, Linda, when I first saw this, um, this introduction to these kits from you and it's just uh -huh. i i'm sure others are left if this is the first time they're seeing this left sitting here going 700 dollars flight simulator what raspberry pi all of these things like what's the catch you're telling me these are free this is amazing it, it and they will ship to alaska for free even amazon doesn't do that you got to pay for prime <laughs> um so yes, they will ship them up here to you for free. They're yours to keep. You do not have to send them back. They want you to keep utilizing the STEM kits. Um, if your kids have outgrown them, move them on to somebody else. Donate them to a school or to a youth group. They have them. They're giving them to you. Please utilize them. Don't stick them in a closet somewhere because We've had some parents, I get a call from them. They're like, I got it, but I don't know what to do with it. Okay, I'll either Zoom with you or I'll come and work with you in person and show you the ways to utilize them. We definitely don't want you to put it in the closet. They are so much fun and you can use them in such a broad span to enhance your lessons. And if you end up getting done with your kit, or if you do end up saying, I'm not going to use this, Family Partnership has a library of all curriculum that's been returned and is reusable for other families. So that would be a great place to send it on once you're done. Yeah, even the rockets are reusable. You, um, I think they send two different engines with it. Once you utilize those, you can get those engines um, at Michael's. They're just a couple bucks and you can keep reusing the rockets. So these are the new STEM kits that just came out. The Sphero, they're going to update it. Um, we were using the Sphero Spark and the Sphero Mini. Now they've updated it to the Bolt as well as a coating mat that comes along with, I think there's two coating mats with it. Uh, 30 Days Lost in Space is one uh, that's teaching you about cyber coding. Let's Go Code is definitely for the young ones. That is a lot of fun. It's got the foam mats that you're putting down, and they're learning how to do basic algorithms. Um, if you want, you could get that. And then the next one, maybe get BBOT and Code and Go Mouse to... Um, once they understand how the algorithms work, now they're going to code it into those bots. Then move on to Sphero, where you're going to do a lot of drag and drop coding. Um, that one is a great starting point for the students that are young. We've got uh, the robotic arm. They've upgraded it to be a robotic workshop. This is a huge kit that I just saw. Um, and you can build more uh, than just one robotic arm. You're able to build a couple of different things, but it's an entire workshop. That thing must have had like 150 pieces. Uh, bridge building just came out as well. And that one, I got a uh, sample kit that they sent me. It comes with so many blue bottles and huge sticks. Uh, to build all these different bridges. It is so much fun. But these are the new ones that have just come out. Okay. Also, 
if you look on the website, it's going to tell you not only the kind of grade range or age range that the kits are made for, it's also going to tell you um, down at the very bottom how many kits you would be able to get. Um, the kits are done basically so that you're going to tell them how many students you're going to teach uh, with the STEM kit. And then based on the value of the STEM kit and the number of students, National decides how many STEM kits they'll send. Uh, usually with the homeschool families, they'll send, excuse me, one. If you have a large group, you're going to teach it uh, like a STEM class, they may send up to two, but they're meant to be used in a group setting. Okay. You have any questions on the new ones? Everybody want one? Yeah. <laughs> Um, I do teach uh, some professional development where I work with the teachers and the homeschool parents on ways that you can utilize the STEM kits to teach multiple subjects and get more bang out of your lesson. Uh, one of the big ones that uh, I like to do is the Roman chariots. Use renewable energy and Sphero. You talk about the Romans, uh, you give your history lesson, the students then have to build chariots out of the, uh, those two STEM kits and then have chariot races. I do this, um, I went to a teacher's conference. Teachers are vicious. They were <laughs> trying to sabotage the other people. It was hilarious, but it was so much fun. I had a hard time regrouping them back to <laughs> the presentation, um, but it, teaches just that lesson alone, history, engineering, you've got uh, cyber and coding. So you've got math, you're working in teams. So you're collaborating, all of that, you know, in one lesson and the likelihood that they're going to remember that lesson and the details of that lesson are much higher because they had that hands-on component and they were enjoying it, they had fun. So, you can do build a moon rover, a Model T, futuristic vehicle. Uh, Sphero can go in water. And with my grandkids, we built the Mayflower. And then we had Sphero pushing the Mayflower. Uh, it's, you know, unending. You could do Columbus. You could do, you know, the Nina, the Pinta, and the Santa Maria. Have them going in the bathtub. So many things. Uh, one of the other ones, Spiro's a lot of fun. He's self-contained, okay? So he can go in the water, but he can also paint. And I had one group, I think they were down in Southeast area. She called me up and they used Spiro as a fundraiser. What they did on a family night is they had pool noodles and they made a square and they put down a garbage bag and put paint in different locations. And then parents basically got a, uh, a postcard size blank card and laid it down and then drove Sphero all over to make abstract art. And they were selling them for a field trip that they were doing, uh, but the parents got involved. The parents had a good time doing that. They got to learn more about coding and everything. So it's a way to bring the whole family together. A lot of times the parents get overwhelmed when they hear STEM. They're like, I, I can't do it. It's, you know, I didn't do it in school. I don't know how to teach it. And it's really not that intimidating. Okay. Uh, down at the bottom, you see they were making, I don't know, I'm not sure what they were making. <laughs> I know one of the, uh, projects that I have on my list to do is you can do battle bots. And what they did uh, in the example, they put these um, like paper cup or styrofoam cups over the Spiros and they had a balloon on the top and a pencil with a thumbtack sticking out. And you had to pop your opponent's balloon. 
So you had all these sparrows running all over the place, trying to pop each other's balloons. It was hysterical. So that's on my list of to do. That's a, my fun project. Uh, the sparrows are great because they also, they light up different colors. Um, they can make sounds. They are a lot of fun to play with. And if you have um, any students that are a special need, they seem to really enjoy Spiro because it can vibrate the colors, the flashing. Um, they really seem to do well coping with the Spiros. Uh, let's see. All of the STEM kits come with certificate of completion. You know, the students, they did their lessons, they worked on the STEM kits. You know, give them their uh, certificate of accomplishment. It's a big deal. If you want, um, we have had some uh, educators call and ask us to come out and present their students with their certificates. We will do that. That's not a problem. I make my husband get dressed up all the time to go and do this. <laughs> so he's just happy to get out of work. <laughs> um, Every STEM kit has its own unique certificate, okay? And those, like I said, those are all free to download. So how you get the STEM kit, the biggest question, you do not get all the STEM kits at once. Everybody, that's what they would love, but no. The, this is where the catch is, per se. You get to order one STEM kit type at a time. Okay, so say you want to order Sparrow. You're going to log in to eServices and go into Aerospace Education and CAP STEM Kit. Okay, in there, it's going to be like a, a kind of like an application. <clears throat> it's going to say, how many students are you teaching to? Um, which STEM kit do you want? They're all listed on there. And then it's going to say, basically, what are you looking to do with the STEM kit? This does not mean write paragraph after paragraph of an explanation. Remember, they have to read an entire <laughs> country of uh, an entire country, an entire nation, basically, of people that have turned in those applications. And so that gets to be a little daunting. They're basically wanting to know you are looking to use them to teach STEM. As long as you put that in there in some format, they are perfectly happy. If you are doing it because you want to give it as a Christmas present, you're not going to get it. Apparently, someone from the lower 48 did put that, that they wanted it for a Christmas gift. They did not get it. Um, so main thing, always, 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 Put your request in before the first of the month, okay? They only pull the orders on the first of every month. So they are working on Eastern time, okay? Do not go in on the 31st at nine o'clock at night and put in your request because it's going to kick it to them saying it's after midnight and it's now the first. So you will then have to wait an entire month. And the only reason I say that is we had a teacher do that and we weren't aware that was happening and the, uh, our national office didn't realize that was happening. So now we know, I put that out there, please you know, do it a day ahead, not a problem. But you'll uh, put it in and are you going to use it and collaborate with others? The Air Force Association loves it when you're going to work with other groups utilizing those STEM kits. If you are, that's great. If you're not, that's fine also. Um, a lot of parents and educators work with Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, uh, 4-H, and they kind of uh, do it double. You know, I'm gonna use it with my students, but I'm also gonna use it with the Girl Scouts. The Air Force Association thinks that's great. Please do it. Uh, so just put that down if that's what you're gonna do. So your order goes in on the first national reviews it. They're going to say, okay, you're going to get one STEM kit, two, two of the same STEM kit, what have you. 
they will send your information to the vendor and the vendor ships it up here to you for free. You don't pay for the STEM kit, you don't pay for the shipping, and you don't return the STEM kit, okay? You, <clears throat> excuse me, you're going to log into eServices or you can send me an email and ask me for the pre and post test. It's the exact same test. There's 10 questions, I think, on it. And they're just wanting to know the students were at level A before they started, after they utilize the STEM kit and the lessons, the post-test is going to show hopefully an improvement. That's all they're looking for to see if it was basically doing what it's supposed to do. Once they do that, you're going to log back in under the aerospace education and CAP STEM kit and uh, complete evaluation will be one of the boxes. You click that, it automatically populates with your STEM kit. You're going to answer 10 questions. And basically, a lot of those 10 questions are just fill in the dot. Um, the kids enjoyed it, they hated it, you know, it broke, whatever. They're just looking uh, to determine was the STEM kit useful? Did the students enjoy it? And was it basically age appropriate? This lets them know when it's time to renew, or excuse me, remove a STEM kit and add something new. It needs to be upgraded, okay? So they're always looking at the evaluations in order to do that. Once you complete your evaluation, it works in real time. Turn around and order your next STEM kit, okay? You don't have to wait, fill it out, click submit, turn around, order your STEM kit, okay? You can keep utilizing that STEM kit. You can pass it on, whatever you want to do. Uh, but if you figure the STEM kits that you're wanting are not on back order, you can pretty much guarantee at least every two months you could get a new STEM kit, okay? Um, some people, you know, they take a little longer or they forget to do the evaluation. You cannot get a second STEM kit until you do the evaluation. The 10 questions, that's their catch. I think that's kind of a pretty minor one. <laughs> um, but do you have any questions regarding the timeline and how to order a kit? No? Okay. I think, Linda, I just have a question to clarify uh -huh. um, because I've seen, I've looked on um online at the options before and i've seen the like suggested grade range i think my interpretation was that it was more limiting to that uh to that age range than you're saying it is so you mentioned the um the cutoff for the flight simulator at fourth grade and mm -hmm. are there any other cutoffs like it, could my second grader, could we do the remote control airplane for my second grader, even though that might be suggested a little higher, or are there any other limits, I guess? The, like the RC airplane and a second grader, that would be limited because no second grader, however smart they are, are going to be able to really do something that intense. Um, a lot of it, it's easier with the homeschool families because you teach multiple grades. And when you fill out your membership application, it's going to ask you what grades are your students in so that they already know when you go to order a STEM kit, oh, yep, you have a student that's in the fourth grade or you have a student that's also in high school. So you predominantly are eligible to order just about anything. The uh, RC airplane, they are much stricter on because that is a very good um, And they wanna make sure that the students are getting that to actually utilize it as a learning tool, not, um, unfortunately we get a lot that dad finds out what it is, it looks like fun and they order it. <laughs> So you just kind of have to take that into account. But I really haven't seen where they denied somebody um, based off of the grade levels. 
that you are teaching. If you do have a problem with that, and for some reason they say, you know, no, we can't do it. I have at least one of every STEM kit. So if you give me a call, we have a loaner program. I will drop it off with you. You can use it for two weeks and give it back. That's okay. so awesome, Linda. <laughs> so there's always a workaround. I love that. So basically the answer is like use great appropriate judgment in in your mm -hmm. request. If it seems out of reach, then they might not let it through. But correct. If that is the case, then contact you because you have options. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yep. And it, you know, it may be if your second grader really wants to do the RC airplane. Okay, well, I'll loan it to you, but I'm going to send one of the pilots with you <laughs> so that they are going to monitor the plane and everything, but the second grader is still going to be able to learn from it without compromising it, I guess, <laughs> would be the best, best word for it. So yeah, we want you to always have a positive experience. And, you know, we understand that national has rules and everything, but at the same time, you know, if we have those spare ones, we want to get them out there to be used. So we will find a way to get it to you and to help you with that one. I feel like those kind of alternative options are really helpful to know about as homeschooling families, because for one thing, it isn't one adult teacher to 25 kids. So there's there's a much higher mm -hmm. um, adult hands-on and support ratio in a homeschooling setting. So something like uh, access to a remote control aircraft, even if it's not doing everything you're hoping that kit could do, it's great to know, mm -hmm. well, they can still get exposure to that through your resources and right. through you because that can be such an inspiring um, exposure for kids even if they're not quite ready for it and because of a lot of the alternative education approaches within family partnership that can really light a fire under them so again thank you for being yeah. so accommodating to teachers and classrooms and families and making like truly looking at the heart of making this technology and education accessible and seeing how much you are doing that personally is really inspiring Oh, well, thank you. Okay, so moving on, we've got the Aerospace Connections and Education, which this is another um, free part of your membership. If you wanna enroll your students in it, it opens up for enrollment every August 1st, and you have the entire school year to complete the program, okay? It has uh, 21 lessons in each of the books, the books are uh, grade specific. So there is a book just for kindergarten with 21 different lessons, first grade, second grade, so forth, okay? And they're broken down into academic character, character development and physical fitness. You don't have to go in a specific order. You can go however you want. You know, it may be a really nice day outside. We'll go do a physical fitness one not a problem or you know it's snowed we can't go outside there's academic there's character development pick and choose however you want um, the nice thing about the program is they are not making the lessons and activities expensive for you they're using basically household um, items that most people have around the house uh, to teach those lessons um, they don't want you to have to go out and spend a lot of money to teach a STEM lesson. That totally defeats the purpose. Uh, if you do enroll in the program, you will get one set of manipulatives for every student that you're going to teach in that grade. Okay, so here's what the manipulatives are. And, you know, with homeschool, that's perfectly fine if you have a first grader, a third grader, a sixth grader. That's fine. You can use the curriculum for first, third, and sixth. You can use all of the sixth grade curriculum 
for uh, all of the students, that's fine. It's however you choose. But knowing um, when you fill out the application, you're going to say, I have, um, let's see, I'm trying to remember how to do this now. For homeschool, if you have three kids, okay, a first, a third, and six, you are going to put on your application, you have three first graders, three third graders, three sixth graders. And the reason you're doing that is so everybody gets to utilize those manipulatives, okay? You don't want your first grader upset because the sixth grader gets the mini rocket football and they got a balsa plane. Or, you know, you have a kindergartner. It's like, well, crap, I just got a little earth ball. I want some of the flying stuff. <laughs> That's fine. You're basically giving them all the manipulative to do a lesson, okay? Um, with the ACE program, you only have to do a minimum of 10 lessons. So there's 21 that are given. As long as you do at least 10, you've completed the program, okay? You'll do the same as you do with the STEM kits. You're gonna log in, you're gonna fill out your evaluation. The kids enjoyed it, it was difficult, whatever. And then the students, you can print out their certificates for completing the ACE program. You as an educator will get a certificate saying, you know, you completed the educator portion of that. And you can also be put in uh, for the educator of the year, which is what um, our teacher down on the Kenai Peninsula, her principal put her in for it and she won. And she had just signed up a few months earlier. Um, but she, you know, she took off with it, did it as an after school program and apparently did an amazing job. Same thing goes with the certificates. If you want us to come out and make it a presentation, we will come out, you know, the pilots, they get dressed up in their uniforms and hand out the certificates. It's something that the kids need to be proud of. Uh, I think these are what the current certificates look like. So you've got the certificate of recognition and then you've got the certificate of appreciation. So one is the educator and the other is the student. And we print them out. Uh, if you want us to come out, we'll print them out on nice paper and everything and make sure to hand them out to the students. So any questions on the ACE program? No? And the same thing if you want to maybe get a couple of families together and do that as you know a, a STEM club or anything like that, you can do that. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Another program that we have is called AEX or Aerospace Education Excellence. This one, um, similar to the ACE program, except for this one is open for all grades. Okay, this one, the requirements are a little bit easier. You're going to complete six STEM activities or AEX aerospace activities. And we have, let's see, I believe there are six different AEX books that are full of different activities, like the uh, robotic arm that I showed earlier or the NASA wind tunnel. So if you don't, you know, know any activities to do, we've got six books full of them that will show you what to do. The STEM activities, if you want to utilize the STEM kit that you have, that would go as one activity, or you could use that STEM kit six different ways if you wanted. You can mix and match, do three AEX and three STEM activities, perfectly fine, okay? And then you just have to complete a two hour or longer field experience. That could be, you know, you call me up and you want to take a group on a field trip to one of our hangars. The pilots come out, they'll talk with you. They let you up in the airplane and everything, taking control of it. That would count um, if you would rather do uh, a virtual. You can do a virtual tour of NASA or, you know, O'Hare's uh, tower 
anything relating to aviation or STEM, that would count for it. You just log in, you put what your six activities were, you put what your um, two hour field experience was, and you've completed the program. This one opens up October 1st, and you have until September 30th to complete those six um, activities. And again, that one comes with certificates for both the educator and the student. And I don't have a copy of what the new one looks like, but this is what the older one looked like. Same thing, we've been asked to go out and do presentations with the kids and hand those out as well, okay? And those are all programs, if you're interested, great. It's part of your membership, it's free. If you don't wanna do it, or you think it might take too much time, you do not have to enroll, okay? If you enroll and you're not able to complete that program, that's fine. They're not going to hold that against you. You just re-enroll the next year if you want or don't. Um, they just want to put that out there as an option for you. They're not, you know, here to slap your hand that you didn't finish it. It's like, okay, we understand time constraints and everything, not a problem. Just re-enroll the next year. Okay. Um, one of the popular benefits of the program is you receive a front seat flight in one of our aircraft every year. It lasts about 45 minutes to an hour. We try to put two teachers up at a time. Um, it makes it one, a longer flight because each of you are going to be in the front seat, okay? The, one of the big ones that the teachers enjoyed last year, we were taking them from Anchorage, going down the inlet to Seward. They would land in Seward. The teachers would switch places. So whoever was in front went to the back and now the back person's up front and they got to fly back. And they usually went uh, the back way down or excuse me, up and around to Palmer and into Anchorage. So they got to see, you know, a lot more than if it's just one person flying, okay? But we encourage you to take pictures. We've had some uh, families where they, uh, homeschool parent, they're up there flying and we'll try and fly you over your house. We've had family members stand down on the ground with signs they're holding up, you know, they're taking pictures and everything. We can also do um, radio or comm equipment if you want. We can uh, basically have you talking to family from the airplane using the radios. We can do that if you wanna do it at the school. Some of the educators want to go up and fly, that's fine. We'll bring in the comm equipment and everything, and the students can talk to the educators in the plane as they fly over. They find that kind of interesting. But we will let you uh, have control of the plane. The pilots will get you up there, explain you know, how the controls work and everything. And if you want to give flying a try, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. Um, but we want you to bring that experience back to the students, you know, the aviation experience and uh, everything. Now up here in Alaska, we have several different planes that the lower 48 does not have. We are the only state who has CAP float planes. Uh, we have ones on skis, we have gliders, and by glider I mean down here in the corner you can see uh, the controls, that's the glider. You're going to sit in the front of that glider the pilot is sitting tandem behind you. You get to release the tow line from the plane that's pulling you up into the air. Uh, and it is a very, it's a very exhilarating experience because it's very quiet. You don't have an engine. You are literally flying on the wind or on the thermals basically. Um, see up at the top, they're on a float plane. Down below, the three of them, they are in an air van. So you know, we have several different planes that you can choose from. We have an amphibian as well. We're the only one uh, that has that. 
if you travel or if you move, your membership will move with you. So you can still continue to get your flights wherever you are. If you happen to go on vacation in New Mexico, they have CAP hot air balloons. You could take a hot air balloon ride. I'm still wanting to go down there and do that one myself. Um, but there are options. Okay. And so what does it take to be the aerospace educator member? The $35 one-time membership fee. That is all it takes. You do get free yearly renewals, but you do have to click renew. Um, that's where a lot of people forget and then their membership expires, okay? CAP is very forgiving. They give you one year past your expiration date to basically uh, renew your membership without paying. So if it's been expired for 11 months, you can renew still for free, okay? After it's been a year, you would have to pay the $35 again, okay? But um, I'm pretty sure Family Partnership does reimburse for that membership fee, don't they? I actually don't know, but it totally makes sense that we would. I'm sure it would be reimbursable. I just have to check that we're, we have um, the Civil Air Patrol on the um, reimbursable list. We're on the nonprofit vendor list. Yeah. Perfect. Then yes, we're good to go. So um, like I said, the $35 fee, the school educators, informal, non-formal, um, formal or not. <laughs> Formal. Oh my gosh, I'm losing it today. Uh, the principals, the substitutes, the teacher aides, homeschool parents, libraries, museums, the youth organization leaders, anyone who is willing to teach STEM can basically qualify. Okay. So your benefits are the free STEM kits, the shipping is free, you get to keep the STEM kit. And right now we've got 20 different STEM kits, okay? The curriculum, all of that is free to you as well. The uh, um, annual teacher flight, that's free to you every year, okay? The $35 doesn't even pay the amount of gas that it takes to get you down the runway. They want to give you as much um, experience and show you as much about STEM and aviation as possible. Okay, the Air Force is paying for that flight for you. Everything um, that we offer will always be shipped for free. You will never, ever have to pay for that. Okay, the ACE program, the AEX programs, those are all free as well. I do the uh, in-school workshop where I'll go and I'll work with you on how to use the STEM kits or Maybe uh, you need help with the ACE program. I'll come out and help you with that. Um, field trips. We do the field trips for you for free as well. If, you know, you guys are in Anchorage, but if we have some that live remotely, we've gone out to airstrips near them and uh, done remote field trips. So we try and make ourselves accessible as much as possible. Um, and the whole purpose is we're here to inspire you uh, towards the STEM careers. Okay. So do we have any questions on the membership portion? No? Okay. Let's see. And that $35 fee has been around for 15 years. They have never raised it. <laughs> All right, so for the cadet program, this is for cadets that are 12 years and up. So they can be a cadet from 12. At 18, they make the decision to remain a cadet for two more years or to move to the adult side, which is called the senior member side, okay? They have four areas that are their primary focus. Leadership skills, aerospace ed and STEM, physical fitness, and character development. Now, uh, with the educators, you get a flight once a year. For cadets, 
they will receive five flights in a glider and five front seat flights uh, in a powered aircraft where they are actually getting uh, flight lessons, okay? And then we also do uh, local, state, region, and national competitions in Color Guard, in Cyber Patriot. Um, oh, there's one more and I can't think of it. I don't work cadet programs, that's terrible. But they do keep them active doing that. And they have encampments every year. We rotate with Oregon. So one year it is up here, the next year it'll be down in Oregon. But cadets can go anywhere in the lower 48 if they want. They can go to any state's encampment. Okay, so they're not restricted just to Alaska or to Oregon. Their core values, integrity, volunteerism, excellence and respect. Uh, so the 12 to 18, again at 18, they decide whether to remain a cadet for two more years or move to the adult side. Now, um, some that are interested in a military career will remain a cadet once they um, achieve the Billy Mitchell Award. They can join the military, any branch, as an E3. So they're going to go into basic training two grades higher than everybody else, which means they're making more money than everybody else. And that's because they've already learned those skills through CAP. Um, you do have to attend three cadet meetings before you can join. And they do that because they wanna make sure that uh, your student is actually interested, not they came the first night and they were launching rockets. And the next time they came, it was uh, physical fitness. And they were like, no, nah, no, nah, no, nah. that's fine. We wanna make sure that it's something that they are interested in. And when we say the physical fitness part, it could be they're out there playing football or uh, going hiking, things like that. It's not they're spending the whole night doing crunches and uh, push-ups. That's not what they're doing. Uh, let's see. So after their third meeting, they can fill out their application online. The commander will get an email that says John Doe is wanting to be a cadet in his unit. The commander will sign off that, yep, he did his three meetings and it works in real time. The uh, student is a cadet. We do try to get the cadets their first uniform, which is the camo. Uh, we get a lot donated from the Air Force. So the camo is normally um, available. The boots, sometimes we have them, sometimes we don't. So that would be an expense. But then once your student earns their first rank, they receive a $100 voucher from CAP to use to Vanguard and order their blues uniform. So it is a little bit of an expense out of pocket, but very, very minimal because CAP is picking up most of that. And once uh, the students get that first rank, they get their blues uniform, it really, that leadership starts to take a whole new uh, stance. You see a huge change uh, in the cadets from when they very first start to a year later. The leadership skills, the character development really kick in. Um, so it's a good thing. They're also uh, heavily involved in the community ambassadors for the drug-free lifestyle. About 10% of CAP cadets do go into the Air Force Academy. And like I mentioned before, when they earn their Billy Mitchell Award, they can enlist uh, as an E3. Okay. So this is a curriculum that the cadets have to follow. They uh, will take tests on each of the uh, modules there. And there's different phases that they will go through. There is actually a uh, volume seven that just recently came out, which is cybersecurity. Okay. But in order to rank 
Uh, they will have uh, tests that they have to take academically. They have a physical fitness test that they have to take. And then they will earn whatever that next rank is. Now, the physical fitness, I know some kids get anxiety with that. And what they're looking for is that you're making progress, not that you can do everything. They take you um, the very first time and they'll mark down where you're at. And then you should be showing progress, you know, each month. So it's not something to, you know, get nervous about or anything. Uh, it's just meant to be a tool towards helping. Let's see. The outcomes of the cadet program, they earn better grades in school, stronger belief with community service, and more interest in aviation and military careers. And that's just some of the ranks and awards uh, that the cadets will get. And then we also have uh, what's called the WINGS program. If your student becomes a cadet and wants to earn their private pilot's license, they can actually do that um, through the Cadet Wings program, and it would be free. So that's about twenty or thirty thousand dollars. Mom and Dad are not going to have to pay. We had um, a cadet up in Delta Junction that just got his private pilot certificate. At sixteen, your student can get a private pilot license. At fourteen, they can solo in a glider. So we do have a powered flight academy and a glider academy up in clear every year. If you have students that are interested and in become a cadet, they can go up and do those. Um, but the cadet wings program, there are mile markers that the student has to meet uh, in order to be eligible to get that uh, pilot certificate paid for. We have uh, also the SEAT cadet encampment assistant program. If the um, cadet needs assistance, paying for encampment, seat kicks in. So nobody should be uh, left out of going to encampment because of funds. We will always make sure that they can get there. Uh, there's different scholarships that they're eligible for. And let's see here. And then just what else we do. Um, I mentioned earlier the class field trips to the hangars, the classroom presentation, the pilot visits. That's normally when I get pushed to the side because the kids are more interested in the pilot. I don't take it personally, my husband's a pilot. Um, but usually the pilots, they love to come out and talk about airplanes. We um, bring the flight simulators with us a lot of the time so the kids can get on there and fly. Those flight simulators have planes. Let's see. I know there's over 100 different aircraft that they can fly. Anything from an ultralight to a helicopter, a Blue Angels jet, a 747, the float planes, they're all in there. And another idea for you, if you're teaching history, we can show you, we've done this uh, with some schools. We've gone out and we've set the simulators up to be old war, World War II aircraft. Um, and the students got to fly those aircraft and they got to learn about those. And we have, one of our pilots uh, used to do carrier landings. So we put that one up on the big screen because you can do a carrier takeoff and landing on the flight simulator. So he was showing everybody how to do that. Uh, just like I said, another way to use a STEM kit to enhance another lesson outside of STEM. And then the professional development classes, all of that. Cadet squadron within a school, that's more for the rural areas. We have squadrons here locally. And then that is it if you needed to contact me my phone number and my email we have a facebook page and we have monthly contests uh, and challenges that are going on right now we've got a coloring contest and a uh, 
design a CAP bookmark contest going on. And the winner in each of the age groups receives a box of uh, 10 different STEM activities. Last month, they did a Halloween coloring contest and they got a hundred piece uh, art kit for each of the winners in the age groups. So we put those out there and I'll put updates on different things that are going on, new STEM kits that are coming out, things like that. And if you're interested in joining, there is a website, and if you put in the recruiter code, that lets me know that you are for Alaska. So that helps keep it so that I can keep track of the Alaskan teachers because I do more than what a lot of the uh, lower 48 groups do. Alaska has the most educators signed up um, in all of the US. So I'm quite happy with that and I wanna keep you guys happy. So we, we send out notices, we'll send out reminders about renewal, different things that are coming up. Um, if you have problems uh, with a STEM kit order, it's going to be delayed or you think it should be here, send me an email, let me know, I'll check with National. If it is on back order, like I said, I've got STEM kits. I will let you uh, borrow one of the STEM kits until yours gets here. If um, yours comes damaged, please let me know. Just don't deal with it. I'll get you a replacement part or the whole new STEM kit, depending on what broke. Um, I've had to do that a couple of times. But I am here to support you, OK? If you need help, I, I said I'm here locally, but I also travel all over the state wherever I'm needed. So please definitely let me know. And let's see. Oops. We have a video of uh, all the teachers flying uh, last year, well, in 19. So if you wanted, I can play that later for you. But any questions, concerns, comments? No? I have a few more questions, but I don't want to hog it. I want to make sure anyone else, if they have questions, they have a chance to ask too. No worries. So one question I had, given just thinking of uh, homeschooling families versus um, versus a traditional classroom where you have one teacher that's the educator. A lot of times homeschooling parents are really sharing that load. So I was wondering if we have a mom and a dad who are both involved in the homeschooling process and who both think it would be awesome to do an annual flight. Is it possible for them to both sign up as educators and both be involved on that side or and, and share the students or how would that work? We do, we have a lot of homeschool families where both parents have signed up and they both, they go flying together and everything, they have a good old time. So yes, both parents can sign up. That's so cool, I love that. Okay, and then I have two questions from um, a parent. These got emailed. Well, before you do that. Oh yeah, sure. I wanted to let you know when both parents sign up, uh huh. They each get to order stem kits, so it's what? not one family. Each one can order stem kits, and the bonus with that is your membership is unique to you. Okay, so if you both wanted to order flight simulators, you can both order a flight simulator. It's not wow. going to say nope. Someone else in your household already got one. Uh, so a lot of times we have parents that sign up simply because they've got multiple students and they want to be able to get more than just one stem kit at a time. That would be so, great if you have a big age spread and you're wanting to get yes. something for the littles, but also something that might be more interesting to older kids than you could do, meet those different age. Exactly. At the same. That's so cool. I love that. Thank yep. you for sharing that. That makes me really excited. Um, okay, I have these two questions from a parent that got emailed in. Um, 
the first is she said she receives um, text alerts and notice that some meetings are outdoors and some inside. What does a typical meeting entail? I think this might have to do with the cadet program itself. The cadet program? Okay. So our national headquarters determines what phase we are in with COVID. Right now, um, they have moved Alaska down to phase one. So we cannot be in groups of more than 10, okay? So it could be that they're, one, I know they're dealing with Lake Hood cadets because constantly, it, the commander there constantly is on the ball with the text and the messaging. She is awesome with that. Um, if it's something that is going to be, maybe they're doing physical fitness that night, they're going to do um, football or something, she will alert where it's going to be at. It'll be at one of the schools outside. Um, if she knows there are going to be uh, more than 10 cadets in a meeting, then she may make it a virtual meeting or she may make it where she breaks the group up. Normally the cadet meetings are about two to two and a half hours. So she's just sending those alerts out um, so that the cadet knows and can plan ahead. They're going to announce what they're supposed to be wearing. Are they supposed to be wearing PT gear? Are they supposed to be wearing their blues or their ABUs? So it's just another way to alert what's going to be happening that night so that your cadet isn't showing up and not knowing what's going on. Okay. Um, her other question was, uh, do the cadets follow the AEX program curriculum? Would I be repeating activities they are doing in the cadet program if I use this resource for instruction? Okay, for AEX, the cadets can, if their commander decides they want to do the AEX program, it does benefit them on their Cadet Quality Unit Awards. But remember, the AEX is very, very broad, okay? It basically says you're just going to do those six activities that are either AE or STEM. The unit may be doing AEX, but that doesn't mean that the activities that you choose are also what they're doing. So, it, I wouldn't say that it's a bad thing. I would say it's more of an enhancement to the AEX program if you did it both as homeschool and as a cadet. Awesome. That I, sounds like a really helpful answer. And on top of that, I would encourage parents if if these if you don't find your questions answered here, Linda is so available and so ready to help uh, individually. I'm, I'm going to encourage families with questions just to reach out to you because I think you'll have a ready answer for anyone. <laughs> and I sent you the different flyers. Um, and also I sent a step by step. If they do sign up, um, their membership works in real time. So as soon as they sign up, they can go in and order their first STEM kit. They can go get some curriculum, sign up for whatever programs they want. Um, if they want to do their teacher fly, let me know. Um, that is all done in real time. They can do that. Fantastic. If there is a pro Sometimes there's a problem with the online enrollment, and that's only because you have to put in an identifier, which is the last four digits of your social. If another um, CAP member has the same last four, it will kick it back and say that it can't process it. It just has to be done manually, that's all. Um, so you could, on that website, you can print a paper form and you can just email it to me. And what I'll do is I'll send it down expedited instead of having to mail it down, go through the mail room at Maxwell Air Force Base and take forever. I'll send it down and ask for it to be expedited. And it usually takes about two days. Perfect. Yes, I have all of those flyers that you sent me. I am um, going to be attaching them. Um, 
I'll probably send them out in an email, like a follow-up email to this, um, to, to this workshop. And then I'll also attach them to the video once we get that uploaded and accessible to our families. So they should have all of those resources available to them. Okay. Okay. So any other questions? Tanya has been down there. She's been very quiet. <laughs> There's a lot to take in. I'm just ex I'm excited to look at the look at the resources. It is very very overwhelming, and I understand that. I am here to basically answer any of your questions. Um, I have gone. I think I've actually come over to Family Partnership and brought a lot of the STEM kits for you guys to have that hands-on and just kind of see what they are, um, what to expect, things like that. I can do that. I can um, bring in some of the curriculum if you wanted. Uh, if you have a question on any of the curriculum, you know, you're not sure if you wanna do the membership yet, let me know. I will send you whatever the curriculum is that you have a question on and you can look at that first. But you have to say for 35 bucks, you can't beat it. I wish I would have known about it when my kids were in school because I would have been all, all over the teachers. If you get one of every STEM kit, that's over a thousand, or excuse me, over $3,000, okay? That doesn't include all the costs for shipping it. Um, the ACE program, the teacher flight, that's not a cheap adventure. Um, so it's a huge, huge savings to the schools and to the parents. $35 is going to get you over $3,000 worth of items that one, you get to keep, you don't have to send them back. They're, you know, you keep using them, you know, use them, share them. So it's a huge, huge benefit. Well, thank you so much for sharing all of this. I'm so happy that this is getting communicated to our families um, and that they get to have a better understanding of what's available there and hopefully tell others. It's just amazing that you guys have really, you're making this accessible, honestly, to anybody just to share exploration of STEM. Mm -hmm. Definitely, if you've got students in Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, 4-H, any of those groups, please let their leaders know that they qualify. They can get those just the same. And the same goes if there's dual leaders. Both of them can sign up. They can both get the same STEM kits if they want, or they can get different ones, however they want to do it. Well, thank you so much for your time and for sharing all of You're this welcome. with us. Definitely. <laughs> All That's right. Fun.